I've paid a lot of attention to media just because it's some of the fastest moving water in the current technology revolution. The ghost in the machine here is information technology. It turns out it's the technology that's enabled a whole bunch of other technology innovations. And we're right in the middle of a massive shift from an information world to a media world. You know, information, the, the difference is, it's information when there isn't very much of it, and the information there is isn't very important. Media is information gone deep into our lives. This is a different kind of media revolution. We, we had another media revolution 50 years ago, and that was the world of mass media. And we came to call it media because it was the only media we had. This is a world of personal media, and there's a profound difference. And what we're seeing is a whole new personal media order intruding in, shoving the old mass media titans aside. The big difference is mass media was a revolution because it delivered the world to our living rooms. But in fact, all we could do is press our nose against the glass and watch. We couldn't participate. To the extent that you participated with mass media, you participated by consuming things. You watched the ads and you went out and bought stuff. Or you sent a letter to the editor and the editor would get hundreds of letters. They would print three and they would edit several paragraphs out of the ones they, they deigned to publish. That was interactivity in a mass media world. A personal media world, in contrast, is a world where answering back is not an option. It's required, otherwise you don't have the personal media experience. Take Google. You don't watch Google. You know, watching Google would be like watching the test pattern on a TV before test patterns went away. The other thing in this media shift that's important to keep in mind is old media never disappear. They just get pressed into new kinds of uses. So paper will not disappear per se. In fact, the role of paper has changed already over the last 20 years from being a storage medium to an interface. You know, once upon a time, we actually did store things on paper and put them in file cabinets. Electronics has taken that over now. and In fact, even go back four centuries, a Bible in the hands of the most devout Christian still spends more time on a shelf gathering dust than actually being read. Paper's been storage. With the advent of the laser printer in the late 1980s, we started moving solidly into a world of paper's interface, an increasingly volatile medium that we print on demand, we read it, we dispose of it or recycle it when we're done. So the new central actor in this economy is an economic actor who in one and the same act both creates and consumes. And they probably don't even realize they're creating. Wikipedia is a modest example that you know anybody can, can put in an encyclopedia entry now. You don't have to work for Encyclopedia Britannica. MySpace and YouTube, where participating in it, you have to create some stuff and put things up. But really, the best example is Google, because you have to create in order to get results. If you don't put a search string in, that act of creation, you don't get the results out. And so this is an economy where every single act is an act of creation that gives back a result. And it changes the economics. Think about what your Google subscription was last month. That would be zero. The companies that get biggest will be the ones who harness the smallest quantum of creative activity. Google is bigger than YouTube was because more people put in search strings than produce videos. Somewhere out there, in a garage somewhere, are some entrepreneurs who are discovering how to make people create with a single click. Or better yet, with no click at all, just by living their lives, that company will dwarf Google in size.